Hello everyone and welcome back to another video that I now have to reshoot because in the last attempt and video I decided to record my secondary monitor, not this one. So yeah, um, so what I'm doing here is yet another Destiny 2 gameplay video. So this is gonna be a rambly one, this is gonna be a rant video, more like, uh, like opinion piece, whatever. And today I'm gonna talk about undervolting and why it's a bad idea. So, yeah. Um, let's first get it out of the way where undervolting actually is a good idea. Uh, and that is on... Like, it was really popular on AMD Vega cards. Because those cards, um, they shipped with fairly high stock voltage and fairly aggressive power limits for what they consume. So they would often not just run hot and from certain designs, they would hit their power limit and they would throttle clocks because of that. So what a lot of people did is just reduce that fairly high stock voltage, um, which would make the cards run colder, it would make, uh, make them consume less power, and because of that, because the boosting algorithm sees that, it would actually make them run faster because no boost is uh, higher because, well, they're running cooler and um, consuming less power. And because that stock voltage was fairly high, the overall stability of the GPU was not really that affected. So, um, now we get to the part that annoys me and why I make this video. So. I'm seeing a lot of people, especially people with NVIDIA graphics cards, which is what really makes me annoyed. I see so many people with NVIDIA cards ask about undervolting. Um, like, hey, I want to undervolt my GPU, how do I do that? And I'm just like, don't. <laughs> don't undervolt, especially on NVIDIA. Like, as far as I know, new AMD GPUs also don't benefit from undervolting. But NVIDIA GPUs especially, because those do not have voltage control. You do not have direct voltage control on NVIDIA. The voltage slider is a lie. It doesn't do anything. Um, that's just allowing the card to use max voltage for longer. It's not increasing or decreasing voltage. It's just affecting how long the card uses a certain voltage. Um, so yeah. There is a way though how you can affect voltage on NVIDIA, card, uh, NVIDIA cards, and I've actually made a video about this. Um, but that was about how to get more voltage out of it, not less, though you could use the same method to just force a lower power state instead of a higher one like I did. Um, but yeah, so that's how you could theoretically run your NVIDIA card at a low voltage. But in 99% of cases, I would not advise it. Don't do it. That, like just don't 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 do it um, and yeah so here's the reason why so remember how I said that the AMD Vega cards had a pretty aggressive power limit and their stock voltage was kind of high um, yeah so for most of the cards that's not the case um, yes Nvidia cards are severely power limited but uh, like at least they can boost properly. <laughs> and then that fairly, fairly high stock voltage thing, that's just not a thing on NVIDIA or, or newer AMD cards. Um, like NVIDIA cards, for example, ship at around 1 volt stock. That's already pretty low. So if you go any lower, you're gonna really have your maximum clocks fall off a cliff. Um, and that wasn't a thing on Vega. Vega didn't need that much stock voltage, it ran fine on less. I'm pretty sure Nvidia cards won't. Um, and my, my daily card that I'm playing on right now is actually a pretty good example of that. So, um, no, you sadly can't see my afterburner readouts anymore, now where Nvidia is hopefully recording the right monitor. But I can see it. So my 2080 Ti is currently running at 2115 megahertz. That is pretty high if you go by the Turing cards max at 2050 to 2100. Though, to be fair, my card is a custom PCB with a very high power limit and it is water-cooled and is using the voltage tweak. So yeah, it's, so that, that is helping the clocks quite a bit. Um, but that's actually my point. So I am using that voltage tweak, which gives me 
43 millivolts more. 40, like 43 millivolts. That's not a lot. That's very little, actually. And and I'm getting asked if I want to run a nightfall. No, thank you. Um. So yeah, just 43 millivolts, and my card now runs 21.15, and even runs 21.45 if it's colder. Um. Before. It didn't. Same temperatures, same power limit. It just didn't run any faster than 2085. So that's 30 megahertz more just by getting 43 millivolts extra on a car that doesn't really have any voltage scaling. Like 2080 Ti's are not really known for voltage scaling because they really don't. But apparently that little still does 30 megahertz on my car. So. You see, just 43 millivolts, which is not a lot, is giving me 30 megahertz. And that scaling, like the difference in clocks you're seeing, gets bigger the lower you go in voltage. If I would go, like, instead of 43 millivolts up, I would go 43 millivolts down. I'm pretty sure I would lose more than 30 megahertz. I would expect to lose something like, well, 60, 50? Um, because, well, again, those cards run at pretty low voltage already. And if you go even lower voltage, well, you're just gonna have your clock fall off a cliff. Um, I am pretty sure that if I would get my card to 900 millivolts instead of 1 volt, or even 950 millivolts, I'm pretty sure at that point it will not, uh, it will no longer run 2 gigahertz. Maybe not even 1.9 gigahertz. And if that would be the case, you would be around 300 megahertz under your overclock. Like, max clock that you could achieve, in, for my example. And at that point, it's not like just a few percent that you can only notice in benchmark score. And I'm getting pinged again about the same thing. Uh, I really should have said my Discord to do not disturb. Um, yeah, so 300 megahertz. On a 2080 Ti, that's running 2100 core around that max. Um, that's more than just a bit score difference in benchmarks. That's noticeable. That's um, I'm bad at making math in my head, but I think that's around 10 to 15 percent. Or is it? it could could be more like seven. Well, like that's noticeable. That could be the difference between 50 and 60 FPS in certain situations. And having 50 FPS is pretty annoying, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, and that's like, you're just making your card slower. So, yeah, unless you have a card where there's the same situation as Vega, where like you have fairly high stock voltage and you're really severely limited by either thermals or power limit or both, then yes, undervolting can make sense. Like, so Vega and like laptops could do that, though I think on laptops it's more like CPUs. But yeah, it does make sense in those situations where you are running a fairly high voltage and you are severely limited by either thermals or power limit or both. It does not make sense in any other situation because you're just ending up making your card slower and well if you would want a slower graphics card why don't you just buy a slower graphics card and stop wasting money which is my second point of all this like you're not just making the card slower for no good reason you're also wasting your money because you could have just spent less of it and have could have gotten a slower graphics card to begin with and usually the um the less money you pay on a graphics card or like the the, the slower of a card you get the cooler they're gonna run because like smaller GPUs put out less heat. So like a 2080 Ti, like the, the stock cooler that my 2080 Ti came with was rather trash. Like it did 86 degrees, which is kind of hot. There's our tech you ready? I'm pretty sure if you would get something like a 2060 or 2070, it would not go up to 86 degrees if you set a decent fan curve. I'm pretty sure it would stay like uh, 60s, 70s, something like that. They're getting pinged. Um, but yeah, uh, where, where was I? Ah, damn it. That's my, that's my speed. Um, so yeah, uh, let's, let's put it all back together once more. So yeah, don't undervolt. Like, don't, don't do it. You're losing performance. 
Um, and like you're wasting money because you could have just spent less of it and gotten a cooler running, slower car to begin with. Um, and then there's one more thing where it's just also like you're gonna have to stress test that thing properly. Like that that's also it, it, it just makes you do a lot of work for no good reason. And and then that that that's even assuming you know how to properly stress test things, which is Sounds kind of easy, but there's a lot of people who use Cinebench to stress test CPUs. Which, if you think, hey, why is that a problem, that's fine. Well, you're one of those people who cannot stress test properly. Sorry, that's just how it is. Cinebench is a benchmark, not a stress test. I'm pretty sure I could Cinebench 5.3 GHz on my 8700K at the very same voltage I'm running 5.1 at right now. It would not pass either 64 or Prime 95. Um, because those are proper stress tests. They actually stress the CPU. Cinebench is just a benchmark. It looks how fast it is. It does not look how stable it is. Same goes for GPUs. So, yes, uh, there is heaven benchmark superposition and valley, and those are fine because Redeemer costs money, and not everyone wants to spend money for stress testing C uh, GPUs. But I have to say that I had it happen that in all of those Unigine benchmarks, I have gotten clocks to pass that did not pass in, say, heavy heavy games or like uh, other stressful situations for the graphics card. I did not have that happen with uh, 3D Mark. Um, so the overclock I'm on right now, I stress tested with 3D Mark actually. So, and like it's been running fine. The only thing that's crashing is Cyberpunk, and it's also happening at stock, so yeah, that's just Cyberpunk and Cyberpunk. Um, so, yeah. So, why don't you undervolt? Because it makes your car slower, She's it makes you do work for no good reason, and it makes you waste money. And also, it makes you sound stupid for experienced people. And I've caught my. Now I've caught myself experienced and. That's wrong. Like, there's plenty of people who are more experienced than I am. I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna try to flex with anything because I have nothing to flex about. So, um, I think that should be pretty much it. Like, it's, it, yeah, it's pretty incoherent. I know. Um, I mean, this is just one of those gameplay videos. It, it is me rambling and being annoyed at things and telling why I'm annoyed and why I think my opinion is so much better. So yeah, um, thank you all for watching or more like listening to this and um, yeah, uh, I hope the next video is gonna be a proper one. <laughs> um, yeah, so until next time, video ends now.